I never imagined my life would take such a devastating turn. For thirty years, I stood by Gregory's side, through the highs and lows, sacrificing my own dreams to support his ambitions. Yet, on that fateful afternoon, the foundation of my world crumbled with a single overheard conversation. We've hidden it long enough. It's time she knows, Gregory whispered, his voice cold and devoid of the warmth I once cherished. Martha's reply sent a chill down my spine. Yes, we need her out. We've played this game too long. My heart pounded as the weight of their words sank in. An affair? With my own sister-in-law? Bile rose in my throat as I fought back the tears, determined not to let them see my anguish. Memories flooded my mind. The countless nights I nursed Gregory back to health after his heart attack. The times I took on extra work to make ends meet when his job fell through. All the while, he had been betraying me with Martha, the woman I had welcomed into our home like family. Anger replaced the initial shock, fueling a newfound determination within me. I would not be the victim they expected, meekly accepting their deceit and abandoning the life I had built. As I confronted them later that evening, Gregory's nonchalant demeanor only stoked the fire burning inside me. He slid the divorce papers across the table, a smug grin plastered on his face. It's for the best, Harriet. You know you have nowhere else to go. His words cut deep, but I refused to show weakness. Not this time. Don't be so sure, I replied, my voice steady despite the turmoil raging within. Martha's eyes narrowed, sensing the shift in my demeanor. She had always underestimated me, dismissing me as a mere homemaker while she climbed the corporate ladder. Little did they know I had been quietly investing and building a safety net just in case life took an unexpected turn. And now, that foresight would be my salvation. As I left the house that night, suitcase in hand, I felt a strange sense of liberation. The weight of their betrayal was still heavy, but it was overshadowed by a newfound determination to reclaim my life. My first stop was Lynn's place. She had been my rock through countless struggles, and I knew she would understand. As I poured out the sordid tale, her expression morphed from shock to righteous fury. "'Those bastards,' she spat, pulling me into a fierce embrace. "'We'll make them pay, Harriet. You deserve so much better.' In that moment, I knew I wasn't alone. With Lynn's unwavering support and my own resilience, I would rise from the ashes of this betrayal, stronger and more empowered than ever before. The road ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. Gregory and Martha had underestimated the depth of my resolve. They thought they could discard me like yesterday's trash, but they were in for a rude awakening. This was just the beginning of my journey. A path paved with challenges, but leading to a future where I would emerge victorious, reclaiming the respect and dignity they had so callously stripped away. The next morning, I steeled myself for the inevitable confrontation. Gregory and Martha were already seated at the kitchen table when I entered, their expressions a mixture of defiance and unease. So, you finally decided to show your face, Gregory sneered, his eyes narrowing. I met his gaze unflinchingly, my resolve unwavering. Cut the act, Gregory. I heard everything last night. Martha shifted uncomfortably in her seat, but Gregory remained impassive. I don't know what you think you heard, but it's time we had a frank discussion. He slid a manila envelope across the table. These are the divorce papers. It's for the best, really. My hands trembled as I opened the envelope, the weight of his betrayal crashing down upon me once more. He truly believed I would simply roll over and accept his deceit. You arrogant bastard, I spat, tossing the papers back at him. Did you really think I would just walk away after thirty years of marriage? Gregory's calm facade cracked, his face contorting with rage. Don't act so high and mighty, Harriet. You know damn well you have nowhere else to go. No job, no money, you're completely dependent on me. Martha placed a hand on his arm, her voice dripping with condescension. Now, now, Gregory, let's not be too hasty. Harriet's had a difficult night. Perhaps she needs some time to process everything. I couldn't help but laugh at her pathetic attempt at placating me. Save your breath, Martha. I know all about your little affair with my husband. The color drained from her face as the truth hung in the air, undeniable. Gregory, however, remained defiant. So what if it's true? He snarled. You've been a miserable shrew for years. Martha understands me in a way you never could. His words stung, but I refused to let him see my pain. 
Instead, I channeled my anger into a cold, calculated resolve. You're right, Gregory. I don't understand how someone could be so selfish and cruel. But mark my words, this isn't over. You and your precious Martha have made a grave mistake. With that, I turned on my heel and left, my mind already whirring with possibilities. I may have been caught off guard, but I wouldn't be caught unprepared. As soon as I reached Lynn's place, the floodgates opened, and I poured out the sordid details of the confrontation. True to form, Lynn was outraged, her loyalty to me, unwavering. Those snakes, she fumed, pacing back and forth. After everything you've done for that ungrateful worm, he has the audacity to treat you like this? I nodded, my resolve hardening with each passing moment. He thinks he can just discard me, but he's sorely mistaken. I won't go down without a fight. Lynn paused, a glint of determination in her eyes. Then we'll make sure he regrets ever crossing you, Harriet. We'll gather evidence, build a case, anything to expose his slimy affair and turn the tables on those two. A slow smile spread across my face as the beginnings of a plan took shape. Gregory and Martha may have thought they held all the cards, but they had severely underestimated me. Over the next few days, Lynn and I worked tirelessly, compiling a dossier of evidence, bank statements, phone records, even grainy photographs of Gregory and Martha in compromising situations. With each new piece of damning proof, my determination grew stronger. But perhaps the most significant development came when I finally mustered the courage to reach out to Olivia, my estranged daughter. Despite the strained relationship caused by Gregory's overbearing nature, she agreed to meet with me. As I laid out the heartbreaking truth of her father's betrayal, Olivia's initial skepticism melted away, replaced by a righteous fury that mirrored my own. That son of a bitch, she seethed, her fists clenched. After everything you've sacrificed for him, this is how he repays you? In that moment, I knew I had found an ally in my quest for justice. Olivia not only offered me a place to stay, but also vowed to help me bring Gregory and Martha to their knees. With Lynn's unwavering support and my daughter by my side, I felt a newfound sense of strength and purpose. Gregory and Martha may have thought they could break me, but they had only succeeded in awakening a force they could never have anticipated. The game was on, and this time I held all the cards. With Olivia's support and Lynn's strategic guidance, I knew it was time to make my next move. Gregory and Martha may have thought they could force me out quietly, but they had severely underestimated my resolve. We need to hit them where it hurts, Lynn declared, her eyes alight with determination. Gather enough evidence to expose their sordid affair, and the whole community will turn against them. Olivia nodded in agreement, her jaw set. Those two have been living a lie for far too long. It's time they face the consequences. And so our plan took shape. Lynn and I meticulously compiled a dossier of damning evidence, bank statements, phone records, even grainy photographs of Gregory and Martha in compromising situations. With each new piece of proof, my determination grew stronger. Meanwhile, Olivia worked tirelessly to secure us a place to stay, a sanctuary away from the chaos. Her unwavering support was a balm to my wounded soul, reminding me that blood ran thicker than the lies that had torn our family apart. As the days passed, Gregory's attempts to coerce me into leaving quietly became increasingly desperate. He would call, text, even show up unannounced, his voice laced with false concern. Harriet, please, be reasonable, he would plead. This is for the best. You know you can't make it on your own. But his words held no sway over me anymore. I had seen the true depths of his deceit, and there was no turning back. Martha, too, tried her hand at manipulation, her saccharine words dripping with condescension. Harriet, darling, let's not make this any messier than it needs to be, she crooned during one of her unwelcome visits. Gregory and I never meant to hurt you. We just fell in love. I couldn't help but laugh at her pathetic attempt to justify their betrayal. Save your breath, Martha. I know exactly what you two have been up to, and I have the proof to back it up. Her eyes widened, panic flashing across her face before she regained her composure. Now, now, let's not be hasty. Surely we can come to some sort of arrangement? But I was done playing their games. With a steely resolve, I showed them the door, reveling in the fear that flickered in their eyes. They had always underestimated me, but now the tables had turned. As the weeks passed, our plan began to take shape. 
Lin and I strategically leaked bits of information to key members of our social circle, letting the whispers of Gregory and Martha's affair spread like wildfire. With each revelation, their reputations crumbled a little more, the once-respected couple now the subject of scandalous gossip. Gregory's career took a nosedive as word of his infidelity reached his colleagues and clients. Martha, too, felt the sting of social ostracization, her once-coveted invitations to charity galas and fundraisers drying up. Through it all, I remained steadfast, bolstered by the unwavering support of Olivia and Lynn. They were my rocks, my anchors in the storm, reminding me that I was no longer alone in this fight. And as the walls closed in around Gregory and Martha, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. They had thought they could discard me like yesterday's trash, but they had sorely underestimated the depth of my resilience. This was just the beginning of their downfall, and I would savor every moment of their well-deserved comeuppance. With Olivia's unwavering support, I found myself embarking on a new chapter of my life, one that was equal parts terrifying and exhilarating. Her cozy apartment became my sanctuary, a safe haven where I could begin to piece together the shattered fragments of my world. As the days passed, I marveled at the strength of our renewed bond. Olivia had been a mere child when she fled the oppressive confines of our home, desperate to escape Gregory's suffocating presence. Yet in the wake of his betrayal, she had become my rock, a constant reminder that blood ran thicker than the lies that had torn our family apart. Together, we navigated the turbulent waters of our newfound freedom, finding solace in each other's company and the knowledge that we were no longer alone. Olivia's unwavering support was a balm to my wounded soul, and I found myself opening up to her in ways I never thought possible. With Lynn's guidance, I also began to venture out into the community, determined to rebuild the life that Gregory and Martha had so callously tried to strip away. I volunteered at local centers and churches, pouring my energy into causes that had once been mere afterthoughts in the shadow of my marital obligations. To my surprise, I found a wellspring of support from the very people Gregory and Martha had tried to turn against me. As whispers of their sordid affair spread through our social circles, their reputations crumbled while mine remained intact, bolstered by the resilience and strength I had displayed in the face of such profound betrayal. Gregory and Martha, of course, were not content to let their downfall unfold without a fight. They launched a desperate campaign to discredit me, spinning tales of my supposed instability and bitterness in the wake of our divorce. But their efforts were in vain. The truth had a way of shining through, and with each passing day, more and more people rallied to my side, offering their support and admiration for the grace with which I had handled such a devastating situation. It was during this time that I also began to explore new avenues for personal growth and fulfillment. With Olivia's encouragement, I dusted off my long-dormant dreams of entrepreneurship, using the skills and investments I had quietly amassed over the years to help her launch a small business. As our venture took flight, I found myself rediscovering a sense of purpose and achievement that had been sorely lacking in my marriage to Gregory. No longer was I content to play a supporting role. Instead, I was taking the lead, charting my own course, and reveling in the sweet taste of success. And through it all, the seeds of my revenge continued to take root. With each passing week, Gregory and Martha found themselves increasingly isolated, their once-coveted social standing reduced to a mere shadow of its former glory. I would catch glimpses of them at community events, their faces etched with desperation and resentment as they watched me bask in the admiration of those who had once been their closest allies. It was a delicious irony, a fitting punishment for the pain they had inflicted upon me. Yet, even as I savored their downfall, I found myself buoyed by a newfound sense of liberation and joy. For too long, I had allowed Gregory's manipulations and Martha's condescension to dictate the course of my life. But no more. This was my moment, my chance to rise from the ashes of their betrayal and emerge stronger, more resilient, and more empowered than ever before. And with Olivia by my side, and the unwavering support of those who had rallied to my cause, I knew that nothing could stand in my way. The future was mine to shape, and I intended to make the most of every moment 
that savoring the sweet taste of victory and reveling in the knowledge that I had triumphed over those who had sought to break me. As my newfound confidence blossomed, I found myself embracing opportunities I never would have considered before. With Olivia's encouragement and support, we began exploring avenues for personal growth that had long eluded me, avenues that allowed me to channel my pain into something positive. It was during this time that the idea for a small business venture took root, fueled by the skills and investments I had quietly accumulated over the years. While Gregory had always dismissed my abilities, Olivia recognized the potential within me, and together we set out to bring our shared dream to life. Our first venture was a modest affair, a small catering company specializing in home-cooked meals for busy professionals. With my culinary talents and Olivia's entrepreneurial spirit, we soon found ourselves in high demand among the local community. It was a heady feeling, knowing that my efforts were not only providing for us, but also bringing joy to others. Each satisfied customer was a small victory, a testament to my resilience in the face of Gregory's dismissive attitude. And as word of our success spread, I couldn't help but revel in the knowledge that Gregory's smug arrogance had finally met its match. No longer would I meekly accept his condescension. I was standing tall, proving my worth on my own terms. It was a sweet feeling, one I savored with every new achievement. And as our reputation grew, so too did my determination to make Gregory pay for his betrayal. For too long I had allowed his callous disregard for my feelings to fester, swallowing my pain in silence. But now, with Olivia's support, I found my voice, and I intended to use it. One afternoon, Gregory's smug facade cracked as I confronted him head-on. His eyes burned with rage as I recounted in vivid detail the evidence of his infidelity. For once, he was the one forced to listen as I laid bare the truth of his deceit. "'You spineless coward!' I spat, savoring the look of shock on his face as the tables turned. "'You think you can simply discard me like trash? You're the one who will pay for this.' Satisfaction coursed through me as I watched his arrogance wither, replaced by a simmering fury. For too long I had endured his scorn in silence, allowing his cruel words to cut deep. But no more. I had found my voice— and I would wield it without mercy. From that day on, I spoke my truth boldly and without apology. Gone were the days of meek acceptance. I was now the master of my fate, and woe be to anyone who dared underestimate me. With each new victory, I savored the sweet taste of retribution. Gregory's smug arrogance had finally met its match, and I delighted in watching him squirm as he felt the sting of my words. No longer would I suffer his scorn in silence. I had found my voice, and I would use it to ensure that he and his deceitful accomplice, Martha, paid the price for their betrayal. As the weeks passed, the seeds of my revenge took root, blossoming into a sweet, intoxicating retribution that left Gregory and Martha reeling. With each whispered revelation, each carefully curated piece of evidence, their once pristine reputations crumbled beneath the weight of their deceit. Gregory's career was the first casualty, a slow and agonizing downfall that mirrored the pain he had inflicted upon me. As word of his sordid affair spread through our social circles, his clients began to drift away, their trust eroded by his lack of moral fiber. I watched with a sense of grim satisfaction as he scrambled to salvage his professional standing, his arrogance replaced by a desperate, almost feral desperation. This was the man who had once sneered at my humble ambitions, dismissing my contributions as mere trifles. Now the tables had turned, and I reveled in his humiliation, savoring each agonizing moment as he felt the sting of his own actions. But Gregory was not the only one to suffer the consequences of his betrayal. Martha, his cunning accomplice, found herself ensnared in the web of her own deceit, her once coveted social standing reduced to ashes. As the truth of her involvement in the affair came to light, the whispers grew louder, transforming into a deafening roar that could no longer be ignored. Invitations to charity galas and fundraisers dried up, replaced by thinly veiled disdain from those who had once fawned over her. Even her own children felt the sting of her actions, their prospects dimmed by the stain of their mother's infidelity. It was a cruel twist of fate, but one that I could not help but relish for it was a punishment fitting for her role in my betrayal. 
Through it all, I remained steadfast, a pillar of strength and resilience in the face of their desperate attempts to regain control. Gregory and Martha tried every tactic in their arsenal, from pleading to outright threats, but I was unmoved. My resolve hardened by the knowledge that justice was finally being served. And as their world crumbled around them, mine only grew stronger. The very community that had once turned a blind eye to their indiscretions now rallied around me, offering their support and admiration for the grace with which I had weathered this storm. I found myself embraced by a network of kindred spirits, women who had endured their own trials and emerged victorious. Together we formed an unbreakable bond, a sisterhood of resilience that empowered us all to stand tall in the face of adversity. With each passing day, my confidence grew, fueled by the knowledge that I had not only survived Gregory and Martha's betrayal, but had emerged stronger and more resolute than ever before. I was no longer the meek, subservient wife content to live in her husband's shadow. I was a force to be reckoned with, a woman who had stared down the depths of despair and emerged triumphant. And as I basked in the warmth of my newfound strength, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure washing over me. The pain of Gregory and Martha's deceit would never truly fade, but it had been tempered by the sweet taste of revenge, a balm that soothed the wounds of their betrayal. This was my moment, my chance to rise from the ashes of their lies and embrace a future that was wholly my own, and as I looked ahead I knew that nothing could stand in my way, for I had faced the darkest depths of human cruelty and emerged victorious a testament to the indomitable spirit that burned within me. As the dust settled on Gregory and Martha's spectacular downfall, I found myself basking in a newfound sense of empowerment that was both exhilarating and deeply fulfilling. No longer was I the meek, subservient wife content to live in the shadows. I was a force to be reckoned with, a woman who had stared down the depths of betrayal and emerged victorious. With each passing day, my confidence grew, fueled by the admiration and respect I garnered from the very community that had once turned a blind eye to Gregory and Martha's indiscretions. Where they had once been fated and celebrated, I was now the one being lauded for my resilience and strength in the face of such profound adversity. It was a heady feeling, one that I savored with every fiber of my being. For too long I had allowed Gregory's dismissive attitude and Martha's condescension to dictate the course of my life. But no more. I was the master of my own destiny, and I intended to embrace every opportunity that came my way. And opportunities, it seemed, were abundant. As word of my newfound independence spread, I found myself inundated with invitations to participate in community initiatives and charitable endeavors. Organizations that had once been closed off to me now welcomed me with open arms, recognizing the value of my contributions and the strength of my character. It was a validation unlike any I had ever experienced, a testament to the power of perseverance and the indomitable spirit that burned within me. With each new endeavor, I felt myself growing stronger, more confident, and more empowered than ever before. But perhaps the greatest source of fulfillment came from the success of Olivia's burgeoning business venture. As our catering company took flight, I reveled in the knowledge that my hard work and determination were not only providing for us, but also bringing joy to others. Each satisfied customer was a small victory, a reminder that I was capable of achieving greatness on my own terms, without the need for Gregory's approval or Martha's condescension. This was my legacy, my chance to leave an indelible mark on the world, and I intended to make the most of it. And through it all I found myself savoring the sweet taste of closure a sense of finality that had eluded me for far too long. For even as Gregory and Martha's lives crumbled around them, they clung to the delusion that they could somehow regain my trust, my affection. It was a futile endeavor, one that I rebuffed with a cold, unwavering resolve. When Gregory came crawling back, his eyes filled with a desperate, almost feral desperation, I met his pleas with a steely gaze. You had your chance, I told him, my voice laced with a finality that left no room for negotiation. You chose to betray me, to discard me like yesterday's trash. Now you, you must live with the consequences of your actions. His face contorted with rage, but I was unmoved. This was the man who had once held such sway over my life, 
the man whose every word had carried the weight of authority. But now he was nothing more than a pathetic shell of his former self, a cautionary tale of what happens when one allows arrogance and hubris to consume them. As for Martha, her fate was sealed the moment she chose to enable Gregory's deceit. The once proud matriarch found herself cast out from the very social circles she had once dominated, her influence reduced to a mere whisper in the wind. And through it all I stood tall, a beacon of strength and resilience that inspired others to embrace their own power. For too long I had allowed myself to be defined by the expectations of others, but no more. This was my moment, my chance to forge a new path, one paved with the hard-won lessons of my past and the unwavering determination to create a better future. As I looked ahead, I knew that the road would not be easy. There would be challenges and obstacles to overcome, but I was ready. Armed with the love and support of those who had stood by me through the darkest of times, I felt an unshakable sense of purpose, a driving force that propelled me forward with each passing day. This was my life, my story, and I intended to write it on my own terms, unbowed and unbroken by the cruelties of the past. For I was Harriet, a woman reborn from the ashes of betrayal, and nothing could stand in the way of my empowerment. As I stood amidst the bustling crowd, surrounded by the warm embraces and well-wishes of those who had become my extended family, I couldn't help but reflect on the incredible journey that had brought me to this moment. It was a celebration not just of Olivia's and my business success, but of the resilience and strength that had carried us through the darkest of times. Everywhere I looked, I saw faces beaming with pride and admiration, faces that had once regarded me with pity or indifference, blinded by the lies that Gregory and Martha had so skillfully woven. But now the truth had prevailed, and I was basking in the glow of a hard-won victory, a triumph over the forces that had once sought to break me. As I made my way through the crowd, exchanging hugs and heartfelt congratulations, I couldn't help but marvel at the transformation that had taken place within me. Gone was the meek, subservient woman who had allowed herself to be defined by the expectations of others. In her place stood a woman of unwavering resolve, a force to be reckoned with who had stared down the depths of betrayal and emerged victorious. Olivia, my once estranged daughter, was never far from my side, her radiant smile a testament to the unbreakable bond we had forged through our shared adversity. Together we had weathered the storm, emerging stronger and more resilient than ever before. As I caught her eye, I saw a wealth of emotions reflected in her gaze. Pride, admiration, and above all, a deep, abiding love that transcended the pain of our past. We had come full circle, our relationship tempered by the fires of Gregory's cruelty, and reforged into something stronger, something unbreakable. And in that moment, I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, united by the strength of our bond and the unwavering determination that had carried us this far. As the night wore on, the celebrations continued, punctuated by heartfelt toasts and speeches that paid tribute to our journey. Lynn, my steadfast friend and confidant, took the stage, her eyes shining with a mixture of pride and unshed tears. To Harriet and Olivia, she declared, raising her glass high, two remarkable women who have shown us all what it means to persevere in the face of adversity, your resilience, your strength, and your unwavering spirit have been an inspiration to us all. A chorus of cheers and applause echoed through the room, and I felt a swell of emotion rise within me. This was more than just a celebration of our success. It was a testament to the power of the human spirit, a reminder that even in our darkest moments, there is always a path forward, a way to rise from the ashes and emerge stronger than ever before. As the night drew to a close and the revelers began to disperse, I found myself lingering, savoring the warmth and camaraderie that had enveloped me. It was a feeling I had once thought lost, a sense of belonging and acceptance that had been cruelly stripped away by Gregory and Martha's betrayal. But now, as I looked around at the faces of those who had become my extended family, I knew that I had found something far more precious than anything my former life could have offered. I had found a community that celebrated my strength, that rallied around me in my darkest hours, and that stood as a testament to the indomitable power of the human spirit. As Olivia and I made our way home, arms linked and hearts full, 
I couldn't help but feel a sense of profound gratitude for the journey that had brought us to this point. It had been a long and arduous road, paved with pain and heartbreak, but it had also been a path to redemption, a chance to reclaim the life that had once been so cruelly taken from me. And as I looked ahead, I knew that the future held endless possibilities, a world of opportunity waiting to be seized by those with the courage and resilience to embrace it. Gregory and Martha were mere footnotes in my story now, shadows of a past that no longer held any sway over me. This was my life, my chance to write a new chapter, one filled with love, laughter, and the unwavering support of those who had become my chosen family. And as I drifted off to sleep that night, I couldn't help but smile, secure in the knowledge that no matter what challenges lay ahead, I would face them head-on, unbowed and unbroken, a testament to the strength that had carried me through the darkest of storms.